I'm all over the place. This is gonna be interesting when I try to edit. That was my dryer, crap. If you look at a lot of things that are labeled robing, robing. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You are in our living room slash, that's John's office currently right there. This is the channel where I document my fiber journey and sometimes when you guys ask a lot of questions I do something like this. It's not really a tutorial it's just kind of like some tips that might help you out. We're just sharing our journey here right? But you might see weaving, spinning, knitting, crocheting, felting, prepping fiber. You can see any of those things. I don't even know. I never know what you're going to see. Since the breed study started and then also sometimes during the Q&A videos I have had tons of questions from you guys about long draw and a lot of you are like I'm afraid to try. I don't really understand. Questions, comments, just everything. I thought about it and I thought it does make sense to do a quick little video that's going to give you some tips a lot of you, a crazy number of you messaged me, commented, I've gotten messages on Ravelry, Instagram about the chain plying video and I thought maybe we could help people this way too. A lot of us learn like the inchworm or short forward draw when we're first starting to spin and that's great, it works great, it's perfect for some kinds of spinning. Long draw is quite a bit different. Long draw is a type of woolen drafting style. A woolen drafting style now this is just my understanding, I'm not an expert, but that to me, what I learned is that means that the twist is traveling straight into your fiber supply. And a worsted drafting style means that you are always stopping the twist from getting into your fiber supply by a front hand, if that makes sense. I think it does. Hang on. It's decaf. Sometimes it's confusing for people because you can also have worsted and woolen in prep. And worsted refers to a size, size of yarn you could use. We're not talking about the size at all. This can be any size. So a woolen prep is one where the fibers are more disorganized. They're going in all different directions. With a woolen prep, you can do either kind of drafting. But if you do it this way, and it's just grabbing the fiber right out of your hand, if you use long draw, it's going to keep that super disorganized fiber structure. So that means that what's inside the shaft of your yarn is literally going all different directions and it's doubling on itself. It's like humping up and smushing up and it's holding all kinds of air pockets in there typically. And this has to do with what kind of fiber you're using, what the prep actually is, everything. But typically, if you use a long draw, you should get a little bit more bounce and you should get a squishier, fluffier yarn. There are some variations to that. There are some exceptions to that, of course. Some things you cannot make them fluffy no matter what you do. I think that if you're learning to do long draw, your best bet is a woolen prep and I have two examples here. This example is some roving from Paradise Fibers. It's a little harder to find true roving. This is a word that is used wrong a lot. If you look at a lot of things, especially like on Etsy or even on some websites that are labeled roving, they'll actually be comb top. So if you're looking for roving, it's a good thing to make sure that it's actually carded roving or you're buying from somebody who understands the difference. This is carded roving. I think it's Corydale, I can't remember, but I will link you guys if you want to try it, if you want to buy some from Paradise. They have like really these really pretty colors. This is one that came in one of the Paradise boxes. Roving's a great thing to learn long draw on. So if you don't have access to roving, but you happen to have a bat in your stash that you bought, look at this, I've totally destroyed this thing. This is a bat that I actually made on my channel. I'll link it to in case anybody cares about that. And it's just supposed to be springy. It has sari silk in it from my shop and some yellow and white mixed. I think it was Corydale also. Um, and I started pulling it into roving. So there's a bunch of ways to do this, tons of ways to turn a bat into roving if you want to. But one of my favorites is to roll it up like a cigar and then just draft it off the end like this. 
And again, if you're wanting to spin long draw, I do recommend that you just draft your bat out. You can just strip it, but this is just one of the ways that I like. So I'm gonna spin some of this long draw and give you guys some tips. And I'm also gonna spin some of this. But if you're trying to learn, please do try to use a true woolen prep. And these are two, but there are more. So these aren't the only two you can use. I, these are just two that I think you can kind of rely on to learn with. Wheel setup matters too. I'm going to spin this on my match list because I can get it going really fast. When you're starting out, it's okay to go a little slower because you will feel a little more control or most people will feel a little more control if they go a little slower to begin with. But once you get the hang of it, you will want your wheel to go really fast. And that's because the twist is what's gonna hold it together as you draft back. So you want it to be able to build up twist and put twist into your like drafted long thing quickly. Every wheel is a little different in how to set them up. I have a double drive, so I have my fastest bobbin. Pretty sure this is my fastest whirl, but the whirls for the shocked matchless have two different ratios on each whirl and I don't have it on the fastest for showing you guys but it is going to be set up to go pretty fast. If you have an electric wheel you have the option of like unlimited adjustments which is really cool. Okay before I actually start I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and then I will like slow it down again because that did seem to work well for a lot of people. This is very fluffy roving, but to begin with, normally I would kind of like uncompact it just to make sure that it wasn't going to want to like stick together. There we go. This is what this roving is gonna look like. So I'm gonna put a little bit of my roving through the leader, like I always start, and draft it just a hair, okay? And then, I'm gonna pinch it with my front hand. You can do this however feels comfortable for you. It seems like people really do go either way and it doesn't seem to matter if you're right or left-handed. You just do what's comfortable for you. So I recommend you really try this both ways with each hand. So my front hand is always my left. I don't know why I'm like that. Do I do that when I draft you? Yes, my front hand is always my left. And now I'm just gonna draft back a little to give me some space. Right now, there is no twist in my fiber supply. It's all up front, right before I start. So what I'm actually gonna do is start the wheel, build up some twist, and then draft a tiny bit as I let it in by going like this with my front finger, hang on. What you can do when you start, and I still do this, I just feel more comfortable that way, is let the twist in little by little by doing this with your fingers as you draft back. So I've got some twists going and I'm gonna pull back and let some of it go into the roving as I go, okay? So I am letting some twist in and then when I close my front fingers again, I'm actually pulling a little bit to draft out. So I'm opening it and I'm I'm actually providing some resistance against my backhand. First, you can just watch it go into the fiber supply and draft it out. Some people do not do that. I should have said that. So controlling the twist up front there's a lot of spinners who will hold their single up front and let twists build up and just go like this without holding it in the front at all. And that is not wrong. That is absolutely correct and right. But I do feel like for someone who's just, I'm not holding it in the front. For someone who is just starting out, it can make you feel a little bit less intimidated to hold that in the front, control the twist, and provide a little bit of resistance. That's up to you how you wanna start out or how you wanna keep going. All the ways that get you to the yarn you want are right. Okay, so let me get a, see if I can get a big chunk in. Okay, apparently I can't. Oh, nope. Okay, I purposely left kind of a slub in right here. So 
So if you find that while you're spinning, what you can do is, I slid my front hand back closer, stop. Take your back hand and just twist it, untwist it a little bit and you can draft it out. See that? And then let the twist in. So that's what you end up with where there was a slub. You can stop, you can, you may have to untwist. Sometimes the, it'll just, if you tug a little bit, it'll open up right in front of you. But if you need to untwist, just untwist a little bit and draft slowly back and those will smooth out for you. And sometimes I don't care. Like sometimes I, I'm embracing the slub and it's cool. So prep's really important. If you wanna control the twist, you can use your front hand. So this is the roving off the bat. Again, it's loose. I'm checking it and making sure. This stuff is loose and fluffy. That's just gonna be easier. So I'm gonna just connect it to what I was already spinning. I think yellow just makes me feel like spring. Oh, this is gonna spin up really pretty. While I'm spinning this, I'm providing some resistance again up front with my front hand. I am holding the back hand so loosely. I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on this. Another reason why you might use long draw is because um, it, it's much easier to spin a very short fiber this way and especially get a more even yarn. If you have a really short fiber and you card it and it's going all different directions, long draw is just a much easier way to spin it. I know you guys can do this. And if you're scared, let me say this too. We talked about this in a Q&A. Every step of your success journey doesn't have to look like success, and it probably won't. I mean, everything that you've learned in your whole life, you've probably made a few mistakes. And so there's gonna be times when maybe your first try, or even your second, or third, or maybe it's only your 10th and your first try was great, isn't gonna look like success. But if you learn something, it's all part of your success journey. So don't let that get you down and do not let that stop you from trying things. If you don't try, you'll never know. If you are an old hat expert, please feel free to leave your tips down below because I am not an expert. These are just things that help me. And I hope this inspires you guys to give it a shot. I am thrilled. Every time someone says like, I tried weaving because of you, I tried spinning because of you, I tried, now hopefully someone will say I tried long draw because of you. That is my goal. I want you guys to feel like I can do this. Why couldn't I do this? If Trish can do it, anyone can do it. It's true. I have no problem saying it. If you're getting yarn you're happy with, you're doing it right, period. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Um, if you're Christian, it's Easter. If you're not, I just hope you have a great weekend. I'm really happy to have you guys hanging out with me today. Thanks. I love you. Bye.